for 20 years was uh, so the idea that many ex-professional players are the, the head coaches in professional football world. And in the youth football world was many, many coaches who was not ex-professional players. It was may come more from the universities, uh, from this uh, kind of, um, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, academics and these guys. And in, year, uh, in the year 2000, 2002, was German football a little bit down because you know, the national team was not so good and we, was, we want to create something new. And then many, many German coaches were thinking, okay, what, what they're doing in Dutch football, in French football and mm, Spanish football. And the youth coaches, they created an idea okay we must train a little bit different with ball more because in germany was germany was normal that you go running to the forest many athletics fighting football and the youth coaches starts a little bit um yeah with this ball possession football with many technical things with beautiful football and then was um, some coaches who go in the professional football world. Uh, for example, Ralf Rangnick come also from the youth coach, an academic from the university, and he start his professional career basis for Ulm. This uh, four back flat. That was a totally new idea in, in, in Germany. And behind this Rangnick types start the new young coaching generation and in 2009 start Thomas Tuchel by uh, Mainz his uh, professional head coach uh, career the one year later I come with Alemannia Aachen in the second Bundesliga and now the last 10 years come a lot uh, coaches who was uh, very busy in the youth uh, football world was not big players they come what you say with sports science like this with many data with a, a uh, other style of football, so a little bit this Guardiola style with many corpus and uh, with this Jürgen Klopp style, many, many game pressing. And yeah, and the, I think the m m most topic from, from the youth coaches who are now in professional football world is we have, we trust young players. So the, the young coaches had the brave and have the brave uh, to set old players on the bench and young players was playing and that was the most thing um, uh, the, or the most difference between this normal traditional coaches and I think uh, that was a good idea because you saw many many young players come in Germany now in 2014 okay what's the highest moment with the world championship to win the world championship that many many uh, young players won this title and that was really also a reason and uh, that this young coaches this academic coaches is a little bit this a different style of coaching come to germany and now you see many many german coaches are all over the world because many german coaches can now speak english or other languages and in germany yeah, you have only some coach positions and now yeah in the whole over the world the german coach is a little bit like the german car um yeah we stay for quality and so i think german coaches and spanish coaches are in this time the most interesting and sexy coaches in the world the var show the one place for your weekly football update So hello, very warm welcome to the VR show, the show which talks a lot of this major football leagues in detail today. We are going to connect here for interviews and we have Mr. Peter Ibala with us, who has managed the likes of NEC, Nag Brother, among host of other teams. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Peter for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to the hello. show. And I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and uh, how has this pandemic time been for you? 
Yeah, f personally, uh, first, uh, hello and thank you for the invitation for the interview. Um, everything in this moment is okay. No? I mean, Corona is in the whole world is shit. And for me as a football coach, uh, I have in this moment not a job. Yeah, it's difficult to get a new job also uh, with this Corona because many clubs think about it. Push or whatever, but it's not. Time is also for me a little bit. Think and you cannot fly, you cannot. And so, um, but on, and uh, I think that is the most important thing. And if you have a job or not a job in this moment. The future is coming, and uh, Corona is very is a, a very interesting time period. But I think for everybody, definitely. And you know, like uh, I wanted to ask you a very basic question: like, how did football begin for you? Like, how was your association first with football? Yes, I um, I come from Bochum. That is a um, uh, yeah, small middle town in Germany. It's direct by. And I'm half German and I'm half Dutch and I was six years old and I, we lived in a house. Children in the region though. And then my mother was thinking, okay, uh, Peter must come in social context with other children. And then we go to a football club. And that was the first pedagogical. I come with six years old in the football club and yeah. My, the idea for my mother was m more social context to other children, and yeah, and then I fall in love with football. You know, I'm six years old, and um, and I was playing uh, by a, a small club, Borussia Bochum, and then I go a little bit to a bigger club, and then uh, SFC Bochum, and uh, and then uh, I feel, and then I was 16 years old, and then they asked me if I want to be a coach for small kids and mm, mm, this is a story um, so begin a little bit my football life definitely and you like like did you like like you said you started back then when you were young basically when you had to coach for kids but did you imagine that you would continue this or you were like okay this is something that I'll do and maybe in as a pastime yes now I start my coaching coaching career with 16, but I was player in the under 17. And uh, before the under 17 training starts, I, I train the under six team, the Bambinis. And and okay, I was 16, 17, 18, and then you feel okay, I like it, I have a talent for this, and then um, and then I search a little bit, okay, with 18 years old, I look by the DFB, which, with, with, with which license you start. So, and the first license in Germany was in this time the C license. And then I did this with 18 years old, with 20 years old, I did the B license. And if I was 20, 21, I, um, and I study sports and psychological, then in this time I was by myself so a little bit okay i want to be a coach so begin of 20 that uh, was not normal for 20 years now it's normal in germany because many many young coaches now in germany but for 20 years was it not so normal that a very young man 20 21 22 said oh, i want to be a professional coach because with 24 i did my a license and with 29 i did my professional license and that was yeah, um, a little bit, yeah, a little bit crazy. Or with twenty nine, now is little, now is normal in Germany. But but for twenty nine, I was for fifteen years. That was uh, not so normal. And yeah, and then it grew up the idea that I want to be a professional coach because first I was professional youth youth coach, and then uh, if I was older, I I was yeah, no a normal professional head coach. Definitely, and since you have done your licensing from Germany all of your life, you spend most of your, you know, like uh, starting your coaching career in Germany through various youth stages, like you said. And of late, there has been one, you know, like German 
contingent of coaches maybe like from when you were doing your licensing maybe like from last uh, 10 15 years that who 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 probably are the most finest coaches mm-hmm. in the in terms of the world football which probably was not the case maybe back when maybe like one generation of coaches before like you you have now very fine german coaches all over the world probably which was not in terms of maybe style or even in terms of maybe the sports science like you said you'd say mm-hmm. sports so like what do you think like made that difference for 20 years was uh, the idea that many ex professional players are the the head coaches in professional football world and in the youth football world was many many coaches who was not ex professional players it was more come more from the universities uh, from this uh, kind of um, uh, yeah this kind of uh, academics and this guys and in year uh, in the year 2000 2002 was german football a little bit down because uh, the national team was not so good and we was we want to create something new and then many many german coaches were thinking okay what what they doing in dutch football in french football and mm, spanish football and the youth coaches they created an idea okay we must train a little bit different with ball more because in german was germany was normal that you go running to the forest many athletics fighting football and the youth coaches starts a little bit um yeah with this ball possession football with many technical things with beautiful football and then was um some coaches who go in the professional football world uh, for example Ralf Rangnick come also from the youth coach an academic from the university and he start his professional career basis for Ulm this uh for back flat that was a totally new idea in in, in Germany and behind this Rangnick types start the new young coaching generation and in 2009 start Thomas Tuchel by uh, Mainz his uh, professional head coach uh, career the one year later I come with Alemannia Aachen in the second Bundesliga and now the last 10 years come a lot uh, coaches who was uh, very busy in the youth uh, football world was not big players they come what you say with sports science like this with many data with a, a Uh, other style of football so a little bit this guardiola style with many purpose and uh, with this jürgen klopp style many many game pressing and yeah and the i think the m- m- most topic from from the youth coaches who are now in professional football world is we have we trust young players so the the young coaches had the brave and have the brave uh to set old players on the bench and young players was playing and that was the most thing um uh, the, or the most difference between this normal traditional coaches and i think uh that was a good idea because you saw many many young players come in germany now in 2014 okay was the highest moment with the world champion uh ship to win the world championship that many many uh, young players won this title and that was really also a reason and uh, that this young coaches this academic coaches this a little bit this a different style of coaching come to germany and now you see many many german coaches are all over the world because many german coaches can now speak english or other languages and in germany yeah, you have only some coach positions and now yeah in the whole over the world the german coach is a little bit like the german car um yeah we stay for quality and so i think german coaches and spanish coaches are in this time the most interesting and sexy coaches in the world definitely and personally i am a big fan of some of the names that you took uh, ralf ragnick of course is like a trail blazer in yes. terms of i think he did not get the credit he deserved probably because he was he didn't manage a 
maybe a very very big club outside of germany like maybe in england or something that's why probably people don't give him the credit maybe outside of germany the or in this part of the world people do not know but who know him like he has done a lot at least for in terms of german football and the coaches you know like inspiring a lot of them after him yeah i, I think uh, ralf rangnick or other uh, really good uh, coaches they um, they want a mighty position so and, and that is very important for these guys that they say okay i want uh, this position um um and i want um to say about a lot never yeah, he comes to red bull for example and he was the boss so and he turned really he comes to hoffenheim and was the boss so he turned the whole style of football and the whole style of coaching and i think in his next position he wants the same so and um and it gives enough clubs who say mm, we don't want this maybe you know that because in germany is so you have always a head coach but you have always a sports director and sports director and head coach must really work together so but you know uh humans the relation between humans are, and that is special in football are not always yeah uh, top and i think so types like rangnick also they want a mighty position and maybe in england or i heard ac milan or like this maybe they say ah, you have a position as a head coach but not the whole manager position i don't know Definitely, he's a, very, he's a very good coach. Definitely, and yeah, I think he's very close to joining AC Milan. I think there was some contract, but I don't know why it did not happen. So you know, like we spoke about a lot of names who have their own philosophy. And for you, how do you like to see your team play? What is your footballing philosophy? Yeah, my philosophy is very offense. No? Although we play other, if the opponent has the ball, we um, I want to play direct pressing. The best is pressing first line. Pressing first line means we stay really by the box of the opponent. If we say okay, we go a little bit back and stay 30 meter for the for the box of the opponent. Okay, then you go a little bit in the combination attack and midfield pressing. Um, if the opponent has the ball, we want to do direct pressure with many many sprints. uh i say always the igloo style as igloo pressing that we come really together like igloo and then we do pressure on the ball and if we have the ball uh in the transition offense okay i want to do direct deep playing deep football i need deep runners but i like also combination football and if we have the ball by the keeper for example okay i want not always play long ball and concentrate on the second ball also has yeah, a typical dutch um to start the game with a with a good uh with a good practice um and with a good dribble style with good passing style that is so a little bit the idea but i want really ball possession from 60 65% and good gegen pressing that is for me to t- totally important and then um always stress in ball possession and against the ball no i i don't want only to win the matches i want really to win the matches and want to see attractive football that the supporters also say wow that is a very good style so so do you think like that is because you know like fans and you know like players and everyone involved in the club in germany are much more closer than compared to maybe in england or maybe italy where there might be some gap between the fans and maybe the players in terms of communication or like we have seen most of the uh, german coaches who are right now at least as of now whom i can at least access you know like on television or anything they all have similar ideology to what you said like like who are yeah. very close to you know like the fans and uh, maybe they all want the fans to you know like enjoy and go back home not just win do you think that the 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 uh, the relationship that uh, the in germany between the fans and maybe the club is much more special that is, that causes this ideology yeah the supporters and the fans in germany are very important oh because football is a totally traditional match and a traditional sport and you know in every region in germany they talk the whole day about football 
Uh, football is really uh, sports number one. And the people, for example, here in the Ruhrgebiet, Schalke, Dortmund, um, in this region, and also in other re regions, football is more than a sport for the people. So and that means that the head coach from every club, from a professional football club, is really a totally famous person here in Germany. And they want to go in the stadium, but you go not alone in the stadium. Now in Germany, it's, it's normal that you go with your whole family in the in the in the stadium, or you go with your wife in the in the stadium, or you go with your best friends in the stadium, you drink some beer before, and then you go in the stadium. And that is entertainment for the people also. Sure, the most important thing is to win. Huh? If if you win, if your club is winning, the people are happy. But if you win and you see spectacle, then you and you see uh, adventure in the in the in the match, then the people really love you. And if you have a coach who, who can communicate with the supporters, who Uh, celebrate together with the supporters who would do interviews who is a little bit normal not so much arrogant and um, that is for german supporters i think very very important because english supporters okay i don't know so really because i never worked in england in, in, in my career but in germany is really you must close to the supporters and you learn a little bit and the match philosophy the football philosophy yeah Okay, uh, the most famous coach in this moment is Jürgen Klopp. And Jürgen, uh, yeah, was for 12 years, 10 years. He come with this gegenpressing idea. And a lot of coaches in the youth development play this idea. So, and this coach is now 10 years, yeah, has now 10 years time to adapt a little bit the idea. And, and the, the typical German idea is ball possession, gegenpressing, deep, high intensity. And I think not only the German coaches and the German players understand it, also the German supporters. Everybody knows a little bit the term gegenpressing. Everybody knows uh, transition fans. And I think that it's very important that coaches are close to players and also close to, to the supporters because the supporters are very, very mighty in the clubs. You said like, you know, like how, like, because you have someone out there who probably is very famous all over the world in terms of Jürgen. And uh, he, 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 like you said, preached Jürgen uh, pressing when, when in all the clubs he has been almost. So do you think like, like, like you said now, most of the coaches are adapting or, or trying to, you know, like get influenced by that. It is more difficult to implement that in Germany because you see almost everyone implementing it. I think you look always by every philosophy. You see, if the best iPhone is from Apple, everybody look to Apple, what they are doing. So you copy a little bit. You have, so, and uh, for 10, 10, 12 years, was in football, was once again, was a little bit in German football, was traditional ex-professional players, our coaches. We played a good organization football, a good structure. The, the, the German business is very popular. Uh, and very rich because we have structure, we are good organized people, we are punctual, blah, 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 blah. And then come always one, two different coaches. No? Rangnick was a different coach. Klopp was a different coach. And, and Klopp come with the idea, gegen and pressing, Wild West football, uh, full power coaching um, next, to the, next to the pitch. And with this, young players, no? Um, Mats Hummels, Mario Götze, uh, and with this system, he has success. And then for every other coaches, uh, is it very interesting? Okay, what is the secret of this success? And then you adapt, you copy a little bit, you you look, and with young players, young players do everything what you as a coach say. So, and then was this term okay? Counter pressing was totally sexy for 10 years. What is this? Ah, okay, we lose the ball and direct, bam, we must jump to the ball and we must win the ball and deep and sprint and power and coaching. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. And that, uh, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, not we copy, but then we implement this style. 
and then two, three, four years, or, or no, no, four or five years later, come Guardiola with his tiki taka and his ball possession. And then we said in Germany, hey, with this, if you have always ball possession, the opponent have not the ball, so we can score. And in the in the youth development, many many touches, every player has the ball, and okay. And then comes this tiki taka idea a little bit. So, and now you see German football and you see now the German national team for four or five years, Yogi Löw, also many, many position plays, very often uh, the wrong number nine, no? not a typical number nine, a tall player was heading. So also a technical number nine. Guardiola take Philip Lahm on number six and not a one meter 90 player. So, and, and, and yeah, and it is always... Um, if some uh, rebels and different thinker come in your business and you have success with this idea, many, many coaches adapt this. And now we are, I think in Germany, so this game pressing tic tac very often. Uh, many, many coaches play now with three, ma three men back flat and not always with four men back flat and, 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 and very, very young. Everybody, everything is very, very young. And you see by Borussia Dortmund is now Mukoku, who is with 16 years old. He's playing so, yeah. And um, But you need always idols for this. And sure, Jürgen Klopp is one of the biggest idols for many, many German coaches. Definitely. And you know, like, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you. And you know, like, you said, like, when you were doing it back then, probably people thought you were mad because you said, like, how at 29 you were doing UFA Pro which was probably not common back then at that age. So who did you look up to any managers when you were doing that? Did you have any, you know, like idols that you would look up to? Okay, I want to be like this person or this is the philosophy I want to play. Uh, I, I have always very self-confidence in myself at first uh, because I feel always and I feel it if I was very, very young, I feel I have no problem to stay in front of players. I have no problem to say my opinion. I, um, I know again, I'm a good talker. So then I was a very hard working coach. So I, I'm half German, I'm half Dutch. So I was always looking also what they are doing in Netherlands. And in Netherlands they train uh, in the end of the 90s, totally different like in Germany. So with this passing forms and this and also with the coordination training and uh, this kind of training session. So I was always believing in myself, always. And okay, sure, then come yeah, coaches like, okay, like Mourinho or like this, who say his opinion. So I'm the special one. I said, well, oh, that is a very self-confidence. And I like coaches who um, say different or not always Blah, blah. So um, I like coaches who say, no, that is my way. But uh, the whole establishment maybe say, no, that is our way. So and I and I, I think you can always do a revolution with guys who are different thinker. No? Uh, Muhammad Ali was a different thinker. Uh, Martin Luther King was a different thinker. John Lennon was a different thinker. And in and, and, and the first moment, they are always a little bit crazy or a little bit mad. And I liked always these people, these this guys. And I had not really an idol. Um, I liked Ottmar Hitzfeld because he was always gentleman and he was always calm and this. Um, but I liked also Mourinho because he was yeah, a little bit special. And um, yeah, but I had not really a coach idol. That was uh, not. Um, my history of coach. I was always looking, okay, what can I do? Uh, because I was working in, in, in clubs, but I was also working in football in football schools. I was also some weeks in, in, in America and did some football schools with kids. And then there was a lot of, oh, many, many coaches who come from international, from, from abroad. And I watch always because I, I have a totally passion for this, um, for this job. Definitely. And you know, like you said, like how you were, you know, like following 
what's happening in Netherlands and what was happening in Germany where you were. And you also have worked in both the countries, you know, with various clubs. How, how different, you know, is working in Germany in comparison to Netherlands in all aspects? Maybe the fans, maybe the formation, how you have to play. How different is it? Okay, for, uh, okay. Germany and Netherlands are brothers, no? Because we uh, we lived next to next, though. So, but um, uh, Germany is a big country. Uh, Netherlands is a bit a smaller country. Netherlands has a very very big traditional uh, football history. And okay, I'm and I'm half half, so I can't speak Dutch and I have, can't speak German. But I'm always in Netherlands. I'm always a German, and in Germany I'm always a Dutch. So, uh, but that is. Um, not a big problem i think uh in in netherlands is a little bit uh, um there's a difference the players and in germany the players they know the intensity of training so and in germany is so a little bit the players they go in netherlands is more the uh, the mentality why we do this why we do this they discuss a little bit more in germany we say okay we do this training and bam they do this and in netherlands they must think okay that is a good idea from the coach then we do this so you netherlands you must more work on the empathy way no uh, they they ask more they give more their opinion they are not always agree with you they come in, in in the dressing room and say, "Coach, yesterday uh, you're coaching. I don't like it." Hmm. Though that was so my idea, or that was my first moment in in Netherlands. If I come in the dressing room, um, in Netherlands the culture is very closed. So you have many many people who are many years in a club. You come as a cowboy, you come in a new club and yeah, you must convince the people. And in Germany, you have more, yeah, you have more soldiers. So we go and we do this and bam. And that is maybe a little bit the difference. And the intensity in Germany in the training sessions are higher. That I can say. We work a lot more with sprints and with power and this. So... And that is the reason now in Netherlands are three, four German coaches now working, because the intensity in the Netherlands and the Dutch sessions must be higher. Definitely. And even like, I'll get back to a little bit more tactical. And uh, of course, I, I, I have sp- spoken to a lot of coaches and they say, okay, this thing is not important. That is formation. But ideally, if you had all the players that you wanted, which formation would do you like playing the most? No, I like 4-3-3 three, three with one number six. Um, or in Germany, you say 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. I like this. I like because I like winger players on the left and right side. But if you have maybe very good two strikers, a very tall number nine who can control the ball and the other number nine is maybe a sprinter, I like also. But Alemannia Aachen, I was playing 4-4-2 four, four, in the diamond. So I like also two strikers because... Every defender in the world who plays in the four-back flat say always to me, coach is so hard to play against two strikers, who two strikers who stay in the middle. So, but I like this Iron Robin guys, no, with the wingers and dribble style. And I'm, I really, I must say, I'm, I'm a supporter of a four-back flat. I understand the idea of a three-back flat or a five-back flat, but I like four-back flat with really. Uh, uh, a left back and a right back with two central defenders with one really number six who is in ball possession who is a playmaker and the quarterback and against the ball is really the troublemaker so and my first system is a 433 and my my second system and the organization is um, 442 but system is not so important for me for me it's more important the principle not the principles, maybe um, dribbling from the central defender is a principle. Um, um, the, to play the contra ball on the other side is a principle. Gegen pressing is a principle. Uh, to play, if we have the ball, direct play deep is a principle. 
um, uh, the deep runnings from uh, from the offense play as a principle to come to the baseline as a winger as a principle. So I work more in principle system because if you play four three three in the offense, you play two four and so on. So the system, I think, it's only an idea if you stay, but if you are moving, then the philosophy is very important. You know, like uh, we are touched on the word a lot, and probably you can hear it all over the world, gigan pressing. You know, and uh, many of our viewers would not be aware of what it is. Like they would have heard it. Okay, they know like it is associated with German football, maybe with Dortmund when Klopp was there. Like, can you explain like what is gigan pressing? Because many of them do not know what it is. Uh, okay, yeah, gigan pressing in English you say counter pressing. The idea is. If I have the ball and I lose the ball, or my team is losing the ball and the opponent has the ball, you can do you can do two structures in this moment. You can say we go backwards and go in the organization and wait. So that is a little bit the idea of Catenaccio or like this. And gegen pressing is that we we lose the ball and direct in three, four, five, six seconds we want the ball back. So you lose the ball and direct. You jump to the ball. You go in for defending uh, and forward forward defending. That is the gegen pressing. So you lose the ball and gegen pressing. In this moment, is you have not the ball. So it's a defense structure. But you want direct have the ball. Huh? It's 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 like a little bit. If you have we have we have now a discussion about whatever. And you say to me your opinion, and direct I say my opinion. So, and the the structure defense is you say your opinion, and I wait and I think about your opinion, and I think mm, okay, uh, the opinion of uh, Subaish was okay or was not. But gigan pressing is direct. You say opinion, bam, I go direct to you, and that is, yeah. That is a little bit chaos. That is chaos. That is a little bit wild west. That is power. Uh, um, you must not so take so many. You must not take a foul in this moment. So gegen pressing is direct to jump to the ball and and win the ball in three, four, five, six seconds. So, so even I think if I'm not wrong, even like I think Guardiola had that like where he would want to win the ball within five seconds of losing. Was that also gegen pressing? Or counter pressing? Yes, 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 yes. I don't, once again, counter pressing is in the transition. Oh, okay. Uh, if the goalkeeper has a ball and you stay very high and you go in your structure, that is pressing. That is the idea of pressing. Gegen pressing, counter pressing, is the idea. The ball is rolling. So Liverpool has a ball. Liverpool lose the ball by Barcelona. Barcelona has a ball, and in this moment, Liverpool do pressure. That is gegen pressing. Okay. So. And and some coaches says okay, um, the, the time limit is five second five seconds. Uh, then they say five, four, three, two, one. In this moment, you must take the ball. If you have the ball not in this five seconds, then you go back in structure in the organization. Look, counter pressing uh, means you must stop the counter of your opponent. That is sort of the idea. Yeah, so I kind of got what you mean, like, and uh, you know, like I'll, I'll move forward with that. And uh, for you personally, like you said, you like playing four three three, like your favorite at least. If uh, if if you yes. take formation is good. Why 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 do you like four three three? Because I like the wingers on the left and right side, and I like uh, one or two number ten who can go also in the box. So if you play, because I think always first. Uh, um, what we can do with the ball, because I'm an offense coach, and I like this dribble. I like this dribble style on the on the wings, and in four three three, I I think um, also against the ball in defense, we can shuffle the ball on one side, and then we can take the ball also on the wings. So um, I like it, but I, I like also four for two in the diamond or. And two lines, I don't like so much, but I, I played also, but because I like uh, two guys, two strikers in the middle, and in the four-three-three, 
you have one number nine, but you need a number 10 bomb who is the second number nine. So in this moment, you have a 4 2 4. So, but I like really the winger players and the left and right back who go where, always go up and they can also overlap the wings. So that is a little bit the reason. Um, I like 4 3 3 because on the left and right winger. Definitely. And we are getting to the end and I have last two, three questions. And first of the three is like, uh, you said like, you like why you like 4 3 3 and uh, which is the most difficult formation to play against if you are using a 4 3 3? Yeah, if you play 4 3 3, then if the opponent plays maybe uh, 3 5 2. So, and, um, and yeah. That is um, always if you play with two really strikers and a three back flat. And if you have a four back flat coach, you must think about this. Okay, what is our solution against this? It is always about spaces and about in which spaces I have more players uh, to do a solution at the ball. Definitely. And you know, like, uh, so I'll ask you, like, uh, second last question and that is like till now if you had to choose one moment in your career the proudest moment which one would that be <laughs> yeah, i have many proudest moments now one proudest moment that uh, i was the youngest uh, coach who did this professional license i was not an ex-professional player so i was one of the pioneers who uh, give uh, you know new coaching philosophy and uh no ideas about coaches and coaching. So um, I, I give always my opinion. Uh, um, I did always so a little bit what I want. You know? I had my offense philosophy and um, my coaching style and uh, I never lose it. That is also very important that you in this business are always yourself. Uh, for this, I'm very proud. Yeah, I, I was by Borussia Dortmund under 19. Um, good successes. Um, I developed many, many good players. Then I was uh, by Alemannia Aachen, second German Bundesliga. I was the uh, youngest, youngest coach in this moment, a professional coach. And we played a very good season. So, uh, um, yeah, many, many career steps was very interesting. was also some crisis, sure. But also, it was... Uh, yeah, I'm, in this moment, I'm very proud and I'm very happy about my life. So, uh, and my coaching career was jup, jup, always up and down. And, and um, uh, but I like it. So, and I was also proud in Slovakia. Uh, we was vice champion and, um, and the supporters loved me because, yes, um, we had a vibe and I cannot speak this language, but I was always, yeah, nice to the normal people so because i'm also normal and yeah and that is i think uh, very important i know i'm proud that i did always my philosophy i did always i say always my opinion and i lose not myself and for this i'm very happy definitely so we'll wrap it up with one final question since you have been involved you know like with football for quite a long time now in terms of coaching so if you had to give a piece of advice to a young coach who's just starting out what advice would you give that coach I think for a young coach, it's very important uh, working very hard. So look to other coaches, what they are doing, what they are saying. Um, look in the internet, what exercises it gives. Uh, and it's very important, coach. So maybe also a small coach or, or young players or children. And start direct to high. Stay, stay first always, start on the bottom. And then coach, 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 do experience, do experience, do experience. That is a very um, um, important thing. Not be arrogant if you have the first success or the second success. Um, always be humble. I think it's very important. Do your licenses, but also look, um, not always to the association, look, do workshops by other guys. Maybe do also workshops, uh, not always by football, to psychological workshops because you must work with, with, with human and not always football. Because I think empathy is very, very important to work as a football coach and not only 
to have football exercise in your mind um, and sometimes do steps who are not normal maybe uh, or go abroad if you have such chance and um, create for you always some challenges so, some, and if you lose or if you one day you are fired will not be depressive because the next chunks is coming and uh, work always on you and believe in yourself that is very important and if you think that is my idea that is your idea then believe in your idea and not always change your idea and 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 say always what other people think um, believe in your idea and believe in yourself definitely and i think like i did see on your social media like where you had given you know like uh, i think guest lecturer for different uh, programs other than football i think yes. you had put up like that was quite good to see like you know like uh, like that i think like many people miss that point like you should be you know like people like footballers are humans at the end of the day yeah i, I think always uh, okay every, every everybody must uh, must decide for 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 him or for so um i like it if you open your mind so and not uh, think also about other other topics and other themes and not always about football but okay if you are a football coach it is a little bit 24/7 job but sometimes you must think about politics or you must think about psychological things or pedagogical things um or business things and i think that is also very important because if you uh you are always talking with your players and the players have also some other ideas about life or some other interests about life and yeah and that is empathy and um, empathy and then tactics and then you are the leader this is a big soup with uh, many many flavors and yeah you must mix the soup and then if you have a big soup uh, i think then you are a co- good coach definitely and you like on that note peter thank you so much for talking to me and i wish you all the best for your future endeavors whichever club you go hope you can win the title and you know like rise to the highest and be the next big german coach known all over the world and thank you so much and hope to talk to you yeah, or well, maybe i come to nepal no? yeah 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 that's of, of <laughs> course and uh, probability but uh, yeah so you know like hope to talk to you soon and till then take care stay safe bye thank you okay. once again take care so player wise it would have to be steven gerard just because again before before he became a, a journalist you know he was he was someone i just admired massively in terms of the absolute complete footballer i think if you were trying to like make a footballer in a factory he would it would be steven gerard someone who you know he, i think jd carrig has summed it up best once when he said you know steven gerard's biggest strength is he doesn't have any weaknesses ah the stadium uh, i i don't see really uh, need to do that mainly um, such a, a big spending but it's true that it would be um, a fantastic stadium that's not bad but uh, you have to be careful and mainly at this moment uh, when we are going to face a very difficult time